Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nistro here and welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be covering Rescue Ace on a budget. It got revealed yesterday that the uh, Rescue Ace core is getting reprinted in Maze of Millennia. Um, hydrants are going to probably be two or three bucks each. Turbulence is probably going to be two or three bucks each. This is assuming that things stay at the pre-sale prices. Um, the entire core of Rescue Ace is probably only to cost you like 15 to 20 bucks at most to pick up the rescue ace cards now's a good time as, as any to give you guys a budget deck profile going into um this year and i do believe this could be a regionals level deck i don't know if this is, if it's ycs level but for regionals and locals this is more than more than good enough to get you to where you need to go triple hydrant one one airlifter because it's limited one rota to get the airlifter or to get impulse if you already have airlifter in rotation triple emergency kind of self-explanatory it gets you into your engine emergency resolving is a lot more important now the airlifters at one we can't just like randomly open uh headquarters plus hydrant like we have to get emergency to resolve for our combos to go off um, that didn't always used to be the case but now that airlifter is limited it is this card will be ash bait so if you can bait out an ash with like a one for one or something before you get to emergency that may save you the game so triple prosperity because prosperity is still a great consistency card that's at three i'll, I'll keep it 100 with you now that we have to recur our airlifter more it may conflict with our headquarters when you resolve prosperity so if you want to save this slot for something like uh, upstart or desires that's I actually don't mind desires you have to be really careful about you can only resolve desires once you've set up the full rescue ace engine right so once you've set up turbulence with your set four that's when it's like okay you can resolve desires which is again kind of risky because you don't want to banish headquarters at the same time you'll never conflict with headquarters either so it's kind of like a give and take right like you get to dig more into your non-engine when you resolve desires but you also get there's also a higher risk of banishing some of your potentially important engine for for the grind game your personal preference i like upstart i like desires i like prosperity i just like prosperity the most at the moment if we were playing post phantom nightmare i would play upstart but we'll get it we'll cross that bridge when we come into it triple rescue is preventer and i wanted to bring this card up to three because i don't just want to draw a hydrant by itself like hydrant by itself is like the biggest uh brick in the deck at the moment so if you open preventer with it then it's no longer just like heat sold now you can still set up a turbulency which is a better board than just heat soul right because at least you get the set four also for grind games it's pretty good because it allows you to recur more of your resources later on and with us crutching more on the emergency getting to resolve then preventer is going to be a lot more significant because preventer plus emergency is basically the the best one of the best things that this deck can do turn two and onwards once you've already started digging into your engine so next off is triple impulse impulse is one of the best hand traps that the deck has ever seen it's kind of interesting because impulse has always been this really great card but just before emergency and preventer the deck was just way too slow to really take advantage of it when the deck was at full power with triple airlifter people were kind of cutting it kind of eh. But now that we kind of need a little more help starting off our engine, I think Impulse is, is the best card. It's great for going when you go second. You can either use it during your opponent's turn, summon out something like Fire Engine or something like Fire Attacker to like get your engine started early. Or if you draw it six card and your opponent has some pretty significant disruptions on their field, you can normal summon it, bait out a uh, negate, tribute it, and then summon out a machine rescues from deck, that either being Turbulence or Hydrant or Preventer to potentially keep on playing the game. Impulse is just a great card. It's, it's a great pivot card, and I can't see it at anything less than three of post ban list. We just need more names in deck to make sure Emergency can always play. Emergency needs to be able to resolve post ban list fire engine still great it's okay to draw it it's okay to summon it off of uh, impulse just be real careful i know unchained isn't going to be as popular anymore uh so you can kind of play into fire engine a little like you, you can play fire engine a little more comfortably it still plays into super poly really hard so if you know your opponent's on a super poly dot deck just try to you know switch it out for your fire attacker um or if they're playing a deck that's in special summon like flow then you go into fire attacker instead and then double turbulence i still think this is like the best ratio for turbulence maybe if the deck gets hit a little more 
the next ban list because they're reprinting it so early at such a low rarity. If it gets hit a little more, Turbulence to three might be the play, but that's assuming that they don't hit Turbulence itself. I think Turbulence is great, right? So one of each of your rescue spells and traps, reinforcing the side, I think for Fire King matchup, reinforcing the side is a good idea. This card single-handedly being, being able to reset your rescue spells from the graveyard. And then when you mix that with a Hydrant, to immediately activate it after because you control Hydrant on your field is pretty good. Um, being able to reset your headquarters if they remove it from field with like a Harpy's Feather uh, Duster or something, you can, you know, get, get your headquarters back and keep yourself in the grind game. So yeah, I think Reinforce is a great card if you think like you're playing a slower deck like Flanderies or Fire Kings and you just need that extra little bit of support against dinosaurs i think this card's pretty good too if you face any dino players at locals reinforces is a pretty good side in against that deck as well ultimate conduct tyranno versus turbulence and a reinforce ultimate conduct tyranno can't touch it <laughs> you know next we have our non-engine pretty much self-explanatory other than the book of moons we play these to to dodge the imperm because imperm and veiler are the only thing that stop us going first other than nibiru like other than ash on emergency or like nib after we go through our combos. Imperm Veiler is really the only thing that stops the turbulence. So you wanna just have protection for that turbulence. These could be Econs if you prefer those for going second, but I just like Book and Moon better. It's worked better for me for going first or second. Book and Mooning stuff on my opponent's field to potentially stop them from making plays. It's never been like a bad card for me personally in this deck. And this deck is like consistent enough to where playing triple Book and Moon doesn't really hurt you, so. It's a personal preference. And then last off is the called by extra deck. I've never played Amirage in my own personal builds, but now that uh, it's more likely we may brick off of a uh, Hydrant, I think Amirage is more important for getting Sunlight Wolf to resolve, right? Because you normal Hydrant, you search Preventer, you link one into Amirage, special pre the Preventer, um, then you link those two into Sunlight Wolf, then that gets the Hydrant back, and then um, summoning Hydrant into Sunlight Wolf's arrow uh, gets it allows you to recycle the rescue waste preventer and that allows you to play again turn three on top of getting access to heat soul now if you're really brave or if you really think um, it's possible that you may draw something like turbulence for your sixth card after doing all that then you know all the more power to you but i think um getting the preventers is, is what's most important here back the preventers what's most important so yeah, that's why you play Amirage, so that we have the, the play to get back the Preventer and make Sunlight Wolf a lot more viable. Link Karibo is necessary to go into the Terahertz combo. If we weren't playing the Terahertz build, I'd say you can cut Link Karibo for Rel Relinquished Anima, because Anima is way better going second. As a matter of fact, if you don't think you feel like uh, playing all the Nightmare Links, you could also play Anima, because an you know uh, going second, you kind of need all the help that you can get, and Anima is just one more card to help you break a board. It is better than Link Karibo in some ways, especially since we're not on SP Little Knight. Link Karibo isn't as strong, but yeah, Link Karibo is mostly here just to play into the Terahertz combo. You, you kind of need it to get itself back from Grave to, to go into the combo. I've, I've shown the combo plenty of times before, but um, if you need some help figuring out how to play the Terahertz stuff, I'll leave a link in the description to Terahertz build combos. Jiggle and Crystal Heart and Binary Sorceress, these are still two of the best links for link climbing. Having access to a Cybers link climb just because we can make Binary then go into Crystal Heart is still really good for both for both going first and going second. Being able to build Binary Sorceress plus Link Karibo into a Crystal Heart is great. And then um, when you revive the Binary, what you'll find is you have two link twos with really rigid link arrows, right? So this one left and right, this one down and left. Meaning um, you can convert these into your nightmare links where they will be co-linked because your regular combo ends you on crystal heart plus binary plus one more monster on field. So you'll be able to turn basically any of these nightmare links to get their draw effect. You'll be able to drop one, draw one with any of the nightmare links that you link into because they will definitely be co-linked. Um, if you summon them using this this uh, combo. You could also just go straight into Boros Sword, right? This is a budget deck, right? This is assuming that you can't afford access code, right? Because access code is like 30, I think it's touching 40s now. So I just put Boros Sword in the list. It's very possible for you to summon it using these guys. That's why I like this, this package a lot better than the other package because this one just, it's smaller and it lets you go into a lot more stuff. So terahertz, if, right? So we still need our aggregator and our desave worm. Still need our Heat Soul. Sunlight Wolf's a newer one that I put back in just because I think Recursion's a lot more important. So we're keeping Sunlight Wolf in. Nightmare Links are kind of just here because 
we don't really need our extra deck unless we want to get rid of stuff. And since we don't have SP Little Knight, assuming we can't afford it, right, uh, as a budget player, I think the Nightmare Links still work pretty well and mixing them with the G Golem Crystal Heart plus Binary Sorcerers, allowing them to be co-linked is pretty sick as well and allows us versatility as to how we can go about breaking a board. So I, I just like to, to, to play all these. Again, these do kind of, you know, it does kind of suck with Prosperity. If you'd rather play Upstart, again, I have no problem with that so that you get the draws. But considering that Prosperity, you only draw it like three out of every 10 hands. Seven out of 10 hands, you're going to, when you use the Nightmare Links, it won't be that much of an issue. IP Masquerina, right, to go into Nightmare Unicorn as well as Underworld Goddess, be, you know, being able to steal your opponent's monsters, right? If you start off with like a Fire Engine, by the time that you get to, if you impulse into Fire Engine during your opponent's turn, by the time you get to your turn, you're going to have like Airlifter plus like a Search of a Spell card, probably Emergency. And then once you get into Hydrant plus Preventer, the Link Climbing is going to be crazy. You're going to be able to swarm pretty easily. Going into Underworld Goddess will not be difficult at all. Just steal one of your opponent's monsters. If they have a link to like SP Little Knight, all you need is three monsters. If they, or if you have the SP, I mean, or if you have the IP Mascarina, then you can just steal whatever monster that they have. It doesn't matter if it's unaffected, doesn't matter what its conditions are. As long as it can be used for a link summon, we can use it to make Underworld Goddess. Boar Sword, I already explained. If you need to go for game, Boar Sword is a great budget card to swing into our opponent for lethal especially when mixed with like a turbulence right because usually i go like a uh, turbulence plus axis code to go for game but if you go into nightmare links and then link climb into boros sword you can go boros sword plus turbulence for game best case scenario if you need more cards to get cards off the field you can side out some of your nibs some of your book of moons maybe even your veilers for more cards that like get cards off the field maybe like regeki cosmics fetter duster evenly even i think evenly is pretty great that's really all like player preference i think mostly your engine's pretty good at playing around interruptions already so you really only need like the supplement stuff to stop your opponent from playing or starting up their turn and you'll be just fine so for the side deck reinforce fire attacker we have to double pancatrops for going second pancatrops is like a really great budget option in some in a lot of cases it's even better than having a fenrir because it can attack and then tribute and then pop and they get rid of two cards that way its attack being 26 allows it to swing over a lot of stuff the fact it, it can pop any card your opponent controls even face down cards be great dd crows just made a video about tr transaction rollback and dd crow is very significant against a uh, rollback and fire king and against well maybe not fire king tribrigade because they can try tribrigade revolt for the monsters that you banish back but like if you're playing in those grind game scenarios, DD Crow is really effective at like just getting them out of rotation. And I think that's more important than anything. Droll, really significant. People are going to be start playing a uh, bonfire. People are going to be start playing decks that search a lot. We don't really lose to Droll that hard unless you hard open Rota. Rescue Ace doesn't really lose to Droll that hard. Um, it doesn't really hurt you as much as it hurts the opponent. But um, if you are playing the upstart, just be careful. Also, if you start with Prosperity, be careful about Droll and you should be fine. But if you Prosperity and you get Emergency, then Droll doesn't hurt you, right? If, if Droll's their only hand trap and you get into an Emergency, you can still play because you just go straight for Turbulence. Droplets, right? As I said, if you need more cards to get cards off the field or just to deal with your opponent's board a little better, if you want to take out Imperms to play around trans Transaction Rollback a little better, Droplets are always good. Uh, Dark Rulers work pretty well as well. You, we don't really need our Battle Phase to go the game. This is more of a, a control deck. Unless we're swinging for game with terahertz, most times we can just skip the battle phase. It's it's okay for us to skip battle phase. Uh, Cosmic for Runic, get rid of the Fountain for Labyrinth, banish their trap cards so that they they can't access them through their graveyard and, and other things. So I think Cosmic's a pretty, pretty good card this format. Also for Fire King, if you banish a Fire King Island, Sanctuary can't protect it. So Cosmic's a pretty good card to play around stuff like that. And yeah, that's pretty much like the bulk of the side and the extra deck that I would say is, I wouldn't say mandatory, but I would say like is like my most, my highest recommendation goes to what you see here. And then from here on, this is like, if you can afford it or if it's right for you, right? If if, if you play too many back row decks or decks are just set up too much, um, evenly is a pretty good card, right? Where it's like, if if um Impulse plus a Book of Moon isn't enough to play through engine, then maybe an evenly might be the card that you want to look for. Triple Tax got reprinted 
uh, in rarity collection. They shouldn't be too expensive. Like, again, nothing in this deck individually is over like six bucks other than like Underworld Goddess. If you have a little extra money to splurge, I think Trouble Tactics could be worth it. But these are a little more like just be careful with these because they're not as strong going first. These are more for going second. The, these are that that's why I don't play too many in my own list. It's not really for going first. Going first, you're already pretty decent at playing around stuff. It's mostly going second. Better Duster, right? If the Cosmics aren't enough, Better Duster's great against Lab and Trap decks. I just don't think it's it does good against Runic. So just be careful about when you side this in and when you don't. It's great in the mirror match, right? Because half the time people don't go for Terahertz anymore. They're going for like SP Little Knight plus like Turbulence. So Better Duster's great. In the mirror match super poly is another one i think uh if you feel like you don't want to play some of the the more fringe cards in the extra deck and you want to uh, have more blowout cards super poly is a great card for going second mud dragon and starving venom are pretty cheap a guru is, i think might be still might be like five or six bucks um, and then some of the more fringe cards like uh draco quiz draco quiz has some lower rarities if you play like a uh, manadium at your locals if you play like guilty gear freed if you want to get rid of like sp little knight maybe not as it, it's it's a little expensive for something that won't come up as often so it really depends on how much you want to invest into this deck like sometimes it's just not worth it to, to invest extra money herald of the abyss is another great blowout card uh if they end on pearly nor x pearly nor herald can can deal with it pretty well Monster Reborn. Um, I like Monster Reborn post banlist just because it allows you more access into some of your engine. Like you could play Monster Reborn, you could play Double Rescue. That's really personal preference. I just like Monster Reborn because it lets us recover through a nib, and it gives us that the, the choice of picking any monster in either graveyard to bring back. Um, and if you target one of your own rescue aces, like most likely, I don't think against your deck people are gonna are gonna be on DD Crow and base deals don't hurt you, so you should be able to recover just fine, unless you're bringing back something like Terahertz, but yeah. Solemn is for going first if you feel like you need that extra protection going first. I personally think the going first build with Terahertz is good enough to where you don't really need the Solemn, but let's say you find yourself not going into Terahertz enough because you're not drawing the right cards, then yeah, when you go into Heat Soul, maybe you may wanna side in the Solemns just so that you're not losing to like random back row removal and then rescue Ace monitor is an interesting one i saw pack play it in his list that topped uh, the richmond regional um, this past weekend and i think monitor is a pretty good card for the grind game just being able to attribute it from hand summon out a rescue Ace from grave regardless of level i think it's a pretty good tech card if you want to consider it i don't know if it has a place in main if it did i'd probably take out one preventer for it right like if you want to take out one preventer and then go for like monitor plus preventer but only due to consistency i'm not doing that right like if 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 we were playing wanted engine i may even consider monitor but because we're playing pure rescue ace i don't know if monitor is is worth it but that's just me right i haven't done enough testing with this card to see if it's worth it maybe you can try it maybe you can like it for yourself now here's some more extra deck options right uh so we got donner dagger for hire because it, you know you have machines and more years you're not limited to one type so donner could be a pretty good card to just clear the board unfortunately it has to like destroy itself to pop a card of your opponent control so it kind of like sucks that you can't link climb with it after you use it sp little knight kind of just power crept this card like Hita the fire armor uh fire charmer and what this does is um if you're ever playing like a mirror match you're playing against Fire King and allows you to take their monsters and then link climb with them or to use them to your advantage. Uh, you can steal their turbulence, get, go into your own set four. I'm only not playing this in extra only because I just think that's kind of situational. I'd rather you have cards that work more consistently than something that's very situational. So it may be situational too for when you brick, but when you brick is a lot more impactful versus when you're going second. Like the charmers are ultimately for going second. And uh, if you need more help going second, I feel like these are really good uh, for helping you link climb. If if you already have an access code, I would say you should play the Charmer links plus a Selene. So you go like one of the Charmers into Selene into access code. And I think that's that's pretty good. Uh, same thing for Dark, right? Like Link Rebo is the main reason why Dark works in our deck, right? Because we can go Link Rebo into Dark and then Dark. We could steal like SP Little Knight. We could steal a whole bunch of little stuff. And then link climb into Selene. We could steal the Bellstar 
even though it, we're, we're playing a budget build actually, so debell star kind of wouldn't matter. And we can steal some stuff from our opponent, Link Lime. And if, if you have access code, put access code over Boros Sword and maybe take out one of these for Hita, I would say. Because Hita can even bring back like an Ash Blossom, right? So it's, it's a little more consistent than Dark is, just slightly. Mm -hmm. If you can't afford Underworld Goddess, Borload is a really, or if you can't find or afford it, Borload is actually a really good um, supplement for it because it can take a monster that it battles, non-targeting, as long as a monster is affected by card effects, it can just snatch the monster to your field and then you can use the monster however you like. And Typhon, if you can afford it, this is a really great card for going second. I think it's mandatory in, in certain matchups like Manadium. So it may be tough to play against certain Calamity Dot decks or like decks that just completely swarm the field without a card like Typhon because then you have to deal with cards like Baron. But yeah, like if you already have it or if you can afford it, I would say it should definitely be in the list. But otherwise, it's touching 30. So let's let's not, you know, mess with it. Gigantic Sprite is something that I played in my uh, list just because uh, for going to locals, like if you're going to bring this, this deck to locals, when you play into time you can go into you know the binary sources plus g golem crystal heart combo and then overlay both of them for gigantic sprite gigantic sprite summon red resonator from deck then red resonator will be able to gain you life points in time and you can gain close to three thousand uh, a little over three thousand life points because gigantic sprite's gonna have a link monster attached to it so if if you plan to bring this deck to locals i would suggest finding space for gigantic sprite in the extra deck you can cut one of the nightmares or you can cut goddess or borosaur whatever you feel like the deck doesn't need appaloosa is a kind of weird one because i've seen plays into appaloosa i'm just not a full believer i think like this is too easy to play around but at the same time it's like if you go into your g golem combo it's not too hard to bring out if you can somehow get a hand where you summon four monsters it's pretty good but you'd have to summon it before you summon turbulence so I don't know how possible that is in this deck. And then Relinquished Anima, I already explained pretty good just for going second. That has been the budget Rescue Ace deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, are you guys considering playing Rescue Ace now that it's a really affordable deck? What do you guys think of the cost of the game right now? If you do have Rescue Ace and you are on a budget, what other cards would you play? The Super New Boy Nistro here, signing out.